A Toyota Prius costs $154,000. A Tesla Model X costs $528,000. I didn't make this up. That's really what you pay for. Welcome to Singapore. I previously made a video about how cheap Singapore is. Am I contradicting myself? No, I still believe you have a choice to live in Singapore with low cost, if you live like a local. But with no denial, cars are expensive. And even before owning a car, you need to apply for a permit first, which is called the Certificate of Entitlement. This COE gives you the legal right to own a car in Singapore. And the COE prices vary. For a sedan, a COE could be $30,000 to $50,000. And it only lasts for a period of 10 years. And what happened after 10 years? You will need to pay again. But this high price tax don't exist for no reason. In my opinion, there are five reasons. Before we get into that, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. Number one, from the traffic standpoint, government tries to keep the traffic down. Think about how big Singapore is. Singapore is a city-state. It's a country and also a city. It has only 200 kilometers of expressway, 704 kilometers of arterial roads, and 576 kilometers of collector roads on this 728 square kilometers of land. Unlike other islands such as Bali and Hawaii, Singapore is really an international metropolitan city with busy schedules. If everyone owns a car, imagine how busy can it be. In order to control the traffic, government does not only put heavy taxes on the cars, but also on the COE of applying for the legal right to own a car. By enforcing these fees, we actually see great results in controlling the traffic. Something really impressive about Singapore is that Singapore has really done a great job on this and you don't see the bad traffic like what you're seeing in other cities such as LA, San Francisco, and New York City. For example, driving within the Bay Area during rush hours may easily get you stuck for two hours, the same as LA. In Singapore, you rarely see this bad of traffic and yes, you get congested slightly a bit but really not bad at all. High prices work. Second, let's talk about environment. A typical passenger vehicle emits about 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. So every gallon of gas burned creates about 8,887 grams of CO2. So if you drive 10,000 miles per year, you're creating more than 4 million grams of carbon dioxide per year. By putting high prices on cars, government does not only help with traffic control make our life more efficient, but also make a really positive impact on the environment and the planet that we are living in. I mean, who wants to breathe into polluted air? Who wants to live in a dusty place? If you don't want any of this, I think having an expensive car policy is not bad for the society at all. Number three, let's talk about safety. With the car prices so high, many younger people don't have enough money to buy a car. Of course, I'm not saying that young people don't have the capability of making money, but it just decreases the chances for younger people to own a car in general. You probably need to work for more than 10 years to save enough to buy a car. And by the time you can afford a car, you will probably be more mature and can drive safer. A recent Singapore news just a week or two ago about the Tanjung Pagar car crash where all the five passengers and drivers in their 20s didn't survive. Some media source reported that they were driving with an estimated speed of 220 km an hour. Although there's no absolute correlation between age and safety, younger people tend to enjoy the excitement of adventure sports such as driving a fast car. I'm very sorry about the loss for their families and friends, but if they couldn't afford a car, maybe they would have been safe. I don't know. This is actually the most fatal accident in Singapore in the past decade. Singapore is one of the safest countries in terms of the death rate per 100,000 residents, according to an online source. I don't know if the high price of the car plays a role here, like what I said early on, but certainly if you can afford a car with one less car on the road, 
one less car will be crashed. Next, let's talk about public transportation. Now, by making the private cars expensive in Singapore, the government is not trying to make your life unaffordable. In fact, they can use the taxes that they collect from the expensive cars to make other alternative public transportations like buses and trains more affordable and cheaper, so that all walks of life can afford it. I've mentioned in one of my previous videos that I pay $25 a day on commuting from a town that is 30 minutes away from San Francisco into the city. But in Singapore, I actually mostly commute with MRT train, which is the subway train in Singapore. It's just $1.10 one way, depending on your distance. So I only spend about $40 per month commuting to work. By living in Singapore instead of the Bay Area, I actually save $450 per month just on commute. In addition to low prices, those trains are actually very clean and reliable, so you will not be late for your work or appointments. So I really appreciate the fact that Singapore offers so many other alternatives for the residents to live our life more efficiently. On the same note, let's talk about taxi. Not only public transportation, if you want to take a taxi, it's still pretty cheap. So from CBD to Changi Airport, it usually costs me about 15 Singapore dollar by Grab or $20 by taxi. In US, if it's New York or San Francisco, you can easily pay like 50 US dollars for the same distance, like three to four times the price over Singapore. You can see Singapore is not trying to make everything expensive. They are really just trying to control the volume of the cars on the road so that the environment is better, the traffic is better, and the people's life overall is more efficient. They are not trying to make the train or the bus more expensive, nor the taxi. And it's also good to take MRT because you can read a book or make a phone call during commute and more efficiently utilizing your time, which is hard to do if you are driving. Plus, it's quite hard to find parking in CBD or downtown, so you actually save a lot of hassles and time by not driving your own car. In my daily life, I've often heard people complain about how expensive the cars in Singapore are. In my opinion, making cars expensive is not bad at all because as I mentioned earlier on, it helps to control the traffic so that we can be on time for our duties and it also protects our environment and planet. There are so many other alternatives out there such as the MRT trains and taxis that are cheap and convenient. So what else can we ask for? I hope you like this video. If you haven't added me on Instagram and podcast, my handles are the crazy koala listed on the screen here. And I really hope to see you on my Patreon community that is patreon.com slash the crazy koala. The link also in the description box. Stay safe and have a great day.